Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Sandra Ingerman, and it's a delight to be back with you again. And I'm Renee Barabo, and it sounds like we've been raising up some questions with some of our work, so we thought we would continue our show on the shadow in a new twist. Yeah, well, I would say uh, it's a continuation of the show on the shadow and the show on transfiguration, what we did with the light. And um, I was telling Renee that I've been getting some private emails from people uh, watching the show about um, when we focus too much on the shadow, that ends up being the dimension of reality we end up living in. And so the, the big question that comes up, and I have a feeling that Renee and I, although we agree on so much, we might disagree on a few um, points, which, which of course will be interesting, but it's always a question of a balance between denial and uh, when you're ready to move on. And so when I wrote uh, my second book, Welcome Home, one of the things that I talked about was a dream that I had where, where the message in the dream, it was an auditory message, was what kind of future are you creating if you're stuck back in the woundedness of the past? And Renee, you and I have been talking about how uh, people can enter into the shamanic realm or, or any spiritual practice because they don't want to be in their body and this seems uh, safe. And so there's that place we can get into of denial where we say, oh, I don't have any more issues to work on. Um, uh, I'm just ready to be in the light. And that might not be true. You might not be ready. And then there's those of us, and I think we've all been there, where we just, we just loop over and over and over again our old stuff. And what my dream was saying is, uh, when is it time to say enough and to step into a different frequency? And so that's really the question we would like to address today is uh, stepping into a new frequency, making a new choice of dimension of reality that you wanna live in, or the term I've been using recently is what field of energy do you want to inhabit? <laughs> it's so interesting when I was, I don't know, in my 20s, I was so miserable and so depressed. It was, you know, I'm surprised I didn't put a gun in my mouth. You know, was that, I was that, that much into my self misery. And one time I learned that I could go to a funny movie that I could leave my misery checked at the door, you know, on my ticket, and I could go in and the first one I went to see was Sister Act and I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And then I realized I was walking out the door, uh, this was maybe my first time travel, is, oh, do I wanna pick the misery back up or do I wanna, you know, do I wanna stay in the, the presence of this, uh, this funny, this laughter, this lightness that I just experienced? And, uh, that stuck, you know, when you have those instances, they really stick with you. This week I was reading about that, that there's been a new, um, a new scientific idea about how the world, the universe was formed. That has been really debunked by a lot of people, but it's uh, basically it comes down to that it's a bounce. I love mm -hmm. it. That, that we bounce. And so that, you know, this kind of what we're gonna talk about today is how do we bounce back and forth between these two components? Because, you know, like Sandra said, there's times when you go by in life and just everything is like, oh, this is great. And then all of a sudden my shamanic teacher's coming to town and doesn't it always happen two weeks before she comes, I like move into this other energy where it's time to go back into, you know, exploration and go deeper again. And it never fails. Like, you know, it just never, never fails. So like if we get into that flow, that there's an ebb and flow in the cycle of this, I think that that's where, where we probably agree on the shadow. I can't wait to see where we disagree. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
for me, it's not so much the shadow. It's, it's when do we make a decision to step into the light? Okay. And, um, and so we can take uh, some of the definition, we can shift some of the definition of the shadow when we're, when we're moving more from the light and moving more from the beauty of our inner landscape. So I'll just use myself as an example because I don't want to, I don't want to make something that's really simple too complex um, talking about it. And so uh, for me, um, you know, I've done so much work and jumping back and forth as you have Renee and lived most of my life suicidal, trying to figure out how to get out of here. And for me, when I, I fully made a choice to live many times. I've, (laughs) <laughs> I've reneged on that choice many times. <laughs> and um, But I, even though the universe is just bringing me endless challenges and initiations right now, which I think it's the times that we live in and it's also what I'm being prepared for. And um, leaving the planet is no longer an option for me. I made a choice to be here even in the midst of the most difficult initiation I've ever been in, in my life. But what I'm finding is, is as I explore, how do I move out of the field of energy that I'm in? Because I spent five years in the darkest place I have ever been in my life. So how do I shift into a different field of energy? And for me, it has to do with um, working, um, creating a bounce, (laughs) a a new creation story in my inner landscape. And and so right now, I've been telling some people, I'm, I'm, I'm very reclusive right now. I'm reclusive from Facebook. I'm reclusive from social media. I'm reclusive from social interaction in my life. I'm really just staying home. If I'm not working, I'm just in a really inner space. And what I'm doing, and I think what the draw is of my psyche to be so reclusive right now, is I need to be really attentive to when I bounce back out into the darkness, into I can't live like this, I can't do another minute of this. I need that that space alone in my house, on my land and nature to go, you can do this. And what's the strength you have within? What's the beauty? And so it's like, it's like I'm redoing my inner landscape, my inner garden. I'm planting the plants that I, I love, these flowers and these scents. And so I'm filling up with so much beauty that I'm, I'm leaving the field of energy of darkness because there's no room for it right now. And so um, when we look at indigenous cultures, and we've talked about this many times in, in the show, they people in indigenous cultures have a light, a joy, a humor um, that Westerners would sell their soul for. And it doesn't mean that they don't see the suffering in their own lives or, or in the world but because they filled themselves with so much beauty, that's not the overriding energy. It's like, yes, there's the shadow. Yes, we move into the time of fall and there's death, but we don't personalize it so much. When your inner landscape is so filled with beauty, it's more, this is a natural cycle then my life has ended. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with the life ending either. So, you know, because we don't really know what what's beyond there, although some of us here do, but we're not going to go into that subject. <laughs> but however, the thing is, is, is that... 
There was nothing worse in my life than being so stuck in my own misery that learning to bounce, I think this is going to be our new where we're going to bounce back and forth in this is learning to bounce out of that space, you know, at such a young age was really good. Although it took me many, many more years to understand that I, I, there was a lot of soul scrubbing I needed to do. And, and so I don't want to discount that. And so I think that unless you do a certain amount of soul scrubbing and that's the kind of work that, you know, the wind work does and that I really do well is that you can not know the difference between which platform you're playing and landing on. You know, like somebody who's so in their misery can't see out from beyond that. So there's a certain, if you, you know, in AA they talk about that people who can't get this are either constitutionally incapable of being completely honest. And so, you know, if you can't reflect your own honesty and if you don't have a partner like Woods or, you know, our show to go back, you know, things where that, you know, you can really get up and center with yourself. Sometimes I don't even know if you know you're in misery. And that's, that's a vibration where I don't want to live. Mm. I'd rather be here where at least I know when I'm being miserable and say, okay, what's going on? I'm, oh my God, I, I, I'm, I'm fasting this week. And so yesterday yeah. I went out without eating and I got grumpy. Well, and this is the place where we might disagree a bit. I think soul scrubbing is great. And uh, it depends on where you are in life in that I think the point that I'm trying to make, which is a little bit different than yours, is that people can also get addicted to uh, soul scrubbing. Oh, yeah, I agree and, with that and end up making a choice in that, in that action, you actually end up making a choice of the dimension of reality that you're, you're going to be living. Oh, oh, that's an interesting um, thought. And so the point that I'm trying to bring up is that there's a lot of us, like I wrote Welcome Home in 1993. It was when it was published. And the point that I was trying to make in that book was uh, for people who never started to do their personal work, yes, you need to do your personal work. You need to do your soul scrubbing. But what about the people who have been in psychotherapy for 20 years, mm. have been in AA for 20 years, have been going over and over and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. When do you say that was my past? I am now an adult and I can bounce into a new reality if I choose to. I couldn't back then. I was a child, my circumstances, I didn't have the, the knowledge of, of how to do my inner work. And so for those of us who have been addicted um, to working through and working through the darkness, um, for me, for that particular population, we end up putting this gigantic anchor on our spiritual vessel that never lets it move forward to a different dimension. We can't because we're always being pulled back. And so for me, it's about making a choice of saying, uh, this is the year 2019. I'm going to be 67 soon. What do I want the next part of my life to be? What's the dimension of reality I want to live in? And have I lived enough in the darkness? And can I still experience the dark places because darkness is part of life and it's part of nature, but not be so attached to it personally, but be able to hold more of that stance of um, the indigenous way of life who knows that the darkness and the shadow um, is just simply a phase of nature, but that's not who I am. 
I am a being of light. I am a being of joy. I am a being that feels beauty inside of myself and sees it all around me. One can call it denial mm -hmm. and one can say evolution. And I'm questioning, uh, those of us, and I'm putting myself in that, in our audience, of who are ready to move into a different evolution of consciousness. Hmm. So I think we're some, somewhat saying very similar things. Because, I mean, I haven't gone to an AA meeting in, I don't know, it's 10 years, six years, whatever, a long time. Because... I, I, the last meeting that I really went to consciously, somebody was having a, a battle at 6 a.m. about where to put the chairs, who moved the chairs. And I'm thinking like, who gives a shit who moved the chairs? You know, that's not why I'm here. And, you know, so I, that, was, that was my final straw. Now, I can't say... A lot of hormonal things happen. When I was 22 and the psychiatrist said, oh, Renee, you started seeking way too young and you're probably not going to stop until you have answers. He says, you know, people who start seeking at 50, you know, then their hormones kick in and then they don't really care so much anymore. And so I haven't been able to tell that for the last, I don't know, I just had a visit with my mom and my spiritual conditioning is really, really good. Life is pretty good, but I've been triggered a little bit before that. And, but I didn't have to let it ruin my day at all. And, and so I just don't know for me if I've done so much work now that I don't live in that space anymore, or if my hormones kicked in, you know, through menopause and none of that stuff just seems so big anymore. So, mm -hmm. and maybe it's a combination of both, but there's what I, I tend to the wall more and the shaman's cave and, and stuff because Sandra says she's in a hiatus and this is, you know, our agreement and I'd like to do it. And I see that there's a lot of pain and suffering there. And I always really try to direct people back to, you know, looking at themselves when they want to, you know, plaster out the misery on the wallpaper, you know. And, and so I think that there's certain people, in, in, and you'd have to say to yourself, like, how much work have I done? Am I ready to move to that spot? Because, again, I don't believe it's necessarily a personal choice. I think it's a, a, an act of grace that we get moved from, you know, living in a place where I want to kill myself to, you know, being so happy on this planet that there's just not enough time in the day to do everything I'd like to do. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a state of grace. Definitely a state of grace. And I think, um, I think for me, uh, I've been in some state of graces before where I've gone into a bliss state but I wasn't able to keep it because um, as uh, my husband Woods always keeps reminding me of uh, what the Buddha said, that everything is impermanent. And so bliss states are impermanent. And so we can get addicted to the dark spaces. We could get addicted to the bliss states, which for me are a state of grace. And I guess for me right now, I'm wondering, um, for me, the word that comes up instead of grace, because I, I know what that means. And, um, and I've, I've been in those states of grace, is what about making a choice of the path that you're going to walk on? And instead of waiting for a state of grace from the universe, making a choice that um, I've done a certain amount, if I haven't, we're never finished with all the work we have to do. I mean, we're human beings. We came to this planet with an ego and personality. Um, but I've done a significant piece of work. And now it's time for me to start looking at what dimension of reality I want to live in and how stuck do I want to get in my old stuff and do I want to take a break from it and see what happens if I step into a different dimension of reality where I can see the beauty in the darkness and I can see the beauty in all of life 
and I can even see the beauty in my misery and mm -hmm. my suffering. And to me, that's a, a high action that is beyond a state of grace because the universe can't pick you up and put you there. That's um, a path you start to carve out for yourself. Um, that's, that's what it feels like to me anyway. Absolutely. And I think I was telling you before our call that one of the modules in the course that I'm planning to teach later this fall is about knowing, looking for the clues and the signs to know when to move between the sacred and the mundane, you know, when to bounce and how to bounce. And, you know, can you use the wind to bounce, which I believe you can use the wind to, to move these states as we're talking about. I don't think we're that really that far out. Mm. I mean, you're just sound like you're ready to move up to the sixth dimension and live there, right? <laughs> and, and I'm just still trying to teach addicts how to not die. You know, I mean, it's not like, I, I try to be the best example that I can of somebody who's healed from the misery. And trust me, when I'm miserable, none of my friends want to hang around me because I can, you know, be worse than the worst. And and knowing that that too shall pass, that that one will, and really making conscious choices. Like um, I was just in a really difficult situation. And in the old Renee, the old Renee would have made, let everybody know how miserable I was. And I would have like put a constraint on the whole thing. And I, I have enough energy and power to make other, you know, I could ruin a day. And I consciously chose in that moment, like, what would be the point? You know, how, how do I respond instead of react to this deep triggering that I'm experiencing? And so I made choices in each and every day. Well, I'm not going to do that today. I think I'll wait to do this until I'm out of this situation and, you know, and, and readjust myself so that I didn't get so far off of my inner inner compass, inner spin access that I had to, you know, barf it up all over for everyone else too. And that come that restraint comes with an awareness, I believe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I basically think that we're saying similar things um, and we're talking to different populations of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm realizing more and more, I mean, I've always realized this and have written the metaphor in, you know, so many of my books of, you know, the old cliched metaphor of, you know, life is where we're wearing a costume, we're putting on a particular mask, we, we're making a choice to play a particular role in life. And so... Um, I'm at the place of looking at from my age and and people listening to the show are a lot younger and haven't had a, a lot of the life experience of those of us who have uh, been here long enough on the planet and have done a significant amount of work when do we uh, step into a different dimension of reality? Because there are all these roles we can take in life. And we can take the role of, I am in misery, and this is life. And I see pain all around me, and this is life. Um, or we can take the role of, working with what we worked with in one of our shows of transfiguration of instead of looking at the suffering and looking at the misery uh, changing our perception because our perception creates our reality and the old mystics the old shamans the old gurus people who live in indigenous cultures they can see the misery but through different eyes, eyes that have light in them. And so the misery actually looks as if it's a light-filled state that is just a phase of growth, is um, a very short phase in the time of planet Earth 
um, it's a short phase of growth. And so for me, um, and I think for other people who are making contact with me right now, it's a period where some of us are just ready to step into a different way of seeing life. We've lived our lives um, from a particular perception. And do we say that because we've lived our life with a particular perception, we have to keep that perception until we die? Or are there different dimensions of reality that we can step into while we're here in our lifetime? And uh, for people who are ready to step into a different dimension of seeing more light um, and working more with the light and focusing more on the light, you can't spend your time uh, just dealing with your own misery. Uh, it just, it doesn't work. It's like Emmett Fox used to say, this is one of my favorite uh, New Thought Church teachings, is if you plant an, uh, an apple seed in the ground, you're not gonna get pears growing. Um, you're gonna get apples. And so if you plant the seed in the ground that your life is miserable, you, you're not gonna see the light. Um, it's just the dimension of reality you're creating with your energy. And so, it's looking at what choice you need to make for this time of your life. Is it um, really going through and doing that soul scrubbing and you really need it? Or is it saying enough for now? Um, I want to experience a different aspect of life and I can make a choice to do that. And I hope everyone has that choice. I really do. And I say, let's do it right now. Sandra's going to lead us in a shape-shifting perception exercise here. And, you know, if the differences are so subtle. It's just kind of who we're trying to drag up to this platform that they can then jump off into that, um, that, that dimension. And, and so I hope you all can join us up here where, you know, where we're sitting at the moment and, and if you need help, we're here. And if you if you are ready to go forward, then be a light on our page. You know, share mm -hmm. your aspiring lights on our page so that it doesn't get filled up with all of the minutia of people struggling. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't sit quietly by why other people are struggling. Add the light. Absolutely. And um, so I know that this is a difficult um, uh, for many people, and, and for those of you who have been on the path for a long time, uh, you've come to this already in your life, is that we do have choices. And oftentimes when we're really stuck in the misery, to hear those words, I have a choice, is, is actually an insult. Uh, it can feel dishonoring because in that moment, in that stage that you're in, you don't see a choice. The path has not been lit for you mm -hmm. to see that choice. And, and, and that is a place where we hold you in love because every one of us on this planet gets to that place of feeling we have no choice but to live in misery. Mm -hmm. And so um, for, for those of you who are, are ready to look at something different, is there a different dimension of reality you would like to inhabit? Because the bottom line on planet Earth, if you look at the population of people right now, I might be a recluse, but I know what's going on in the news. I have enough people telling me. <laughs> and there are so many different dimensions of reality going on, and it's all mind. It's what people are thinking about. It's where their perception is, is your perception that opening up borders is evil? Is your perception that opening up borders is good? Think about all the opinions out there and with each opinion, 
creates a different dimension of reality. And so we already have, it's like we have this planet where people are literally living in different parallel dimensions at the same time right now here. And the question we're asking you to look at while I do a short drumming, and so um, I'll guide you on this a little bit, is um, what dimension of reality would you like to step in right now? What new choice would you like to make? Or, or have you made the choice that feels really right for you right now? Do you need to shift your perception of not personalizing everything, but um, being able to step back and see the beauty within and the beauty without? What dimension of reality do you want to live in and what choice do you want to make? And if you can, ask for the very first step for you to take. Remember uh, that taking step by step instead of trying to fly, flying up to the mountain, the top of the mountain is a state of grace. What we're talking about is walking up the mountain and which path um, do you want to take? So what are your choices right now? And, and what choice would you like to make of what field of energy or dimension of reality do you want to um, live in? And is there a first step in making that choice? And so basically just go within your heart and soul. Know the answers to these questions. Travel within, beyond your mind, to the place where your intuition lives and let the light inside of you grow. And as you sit in that light and reflect on your life and reflect on all the opportunities you have while you're alive on planet Earth, What's a choice, a clear choice that you would like to make right now and to commit to our circle on the shaman's cave of the dimension of reality that you would like to experience for a while? What choice would you like to make? Would you like to see beauty all around you realizing that the darkness is just a time of growth? Or do you feel that being in a collective of scrubbing souls is more of where you're at right now, that this is where your soul is leading you to, to do that alchemy of really being able to change those deep, dark states of heavy leaded consciousness into gold light states? Or are you ready to step more into the light? You've already spent so much time in the darkness. What's your choice right now? And what's the next step for you to explore the depth of where your soul is leading you to. Because your soul always knows your destiny. So ask your heart and ask your soul. And if they're not speaking to you today, take some time after the shaman's cave to spend some time in nature and reflect on all that's been shared and notice where you bounce. 
I'll just drum for a little bit to give you the opportunity to see if there's more that wants to emerge. We always have choice in this lifetime, even if it doesn't feel like it. This is time for you to reflect on the choices you want to make at this stage of your evolution and where we are on the planet right now. But for now, it's time to return and keep reflecting as time goes on. So take the information that did come from this short journey and plant a seed in your inner garden so that you start creating the plants that you wish to see grow. Because what we feed grows. Welcome back, everyone. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like so soul scrubbers over here. People who are just ready to ease on over here. So this will be like, it'll be interesting to see where our conversation goes next after this. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's realizing that that the planet is already living in different uh realities and um it's not about if you're you go here or go there we're already living in different realities and what's your choice of the reality that you wish to live in and so yeah it'll be interesting conversations on the shaman's cave i'll i'll be checking in on after this one <laughs> Yeah, so we, we'll be curious to see the um, feedback. So you can watch our, our replays at theshamanstv.com. You can also sign up for a mailing list that goes out once a week to let you know that the new episode is here. And then we also have the Shaman's Cape group. And, and, and you can also listen to us on SoundsCloud, make it an iPod favorite, or we're also now on Google um, so we're on a lot of the big players. So start to look for us if you want to listen to us while you're driving. But please wait until you're parked to do these meditations because <laughs> I always find them a little bit transformative. Absolutely. And uh, we, we're we really getting such great feedback. I mean, uh, the emails coming through are really wonderful. And so it's really a delight to join you, Renee, in touching people's hearts, whether you're in the process of soul scrubbing or whether you're in the process of stepping into the light, you're held in the circle in love. And we kid about that. I mean, we're not serious about that. There's groups of soul scrubbers and groups <laughs> of light, but wherever you are, right now in your life know that you're being held by the entire circle of the shaman's cave in love thank you everyone we'll see you soon